So before I uh, came to York, I was based at the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory where the Vulcan Petawatt laser is. Um, and I was a researcher based on um, mainly using that laser. And I, I was a researcher based around that laser. And, and we were doing some work back in, I think it was about 2006, uh, where we were looking at when you interact the laser with the target, it produces these hot electrons um, and it produces uh, so mega amp currents of hot electrons traveling into the target. Um, and when, when they travel, when they propagate, they're diverging. And at the time we were researching using these electrons as a spark plug for a type of inertial confinement fusion, which is a type of fusion where you compress some matter to very high densities using some long pulse lasers and then ignite it using a very short pulse laser. Um, and that's called fast ignition and that's what I was researching at the time. Um, and we were looking at how these hot electrons are produced um, and how that energy was transported. And so we found that these electrons, um, so people had measured that these electrons diverged before, but it was the first time we'd measured this divergence on such a powerful laser. And we showed that actually the divergence gets worse as you go up in intensity, which is kind of depressing, but it's also really interesting because what it meant was that we then had to be more cunning as, as scientists uh, to try and understand how to manipulate uh, electron beams uh, by manipulating the target parameters, for example, um, which is the kind of thing that I'm actually doing now. Uh, so, so a little seed of an idea, you know, the, a first time measurement on, on a petawatt class laser has led to something that I'm doing maybe even 10 years later. So, so, it's, so it's a really exciting, really interesting measurement, despite it being a little bit depressing at the time. <laughs> when I was, must have been about 22, maybe even, yeah, I think I was 22. I was one of my first experiments um, and I had to set up uh, a bunch of long pulse beams in the Vulcan uh, laser. This was pre-Vulcan petawatt, so um, basically long pulse lasers are, are lasers which are a nanosecond in length and they're useful for using for inertial confinement fusion studies where you have to compress some material over a period of a nanosecond or so. And so that's what we were doing. We were basically compressing some material and then we were basically trying to inject a higher intensity laser, so a sort of mock uh, fast ignition, uh, which is a type of, uh, it's a kind of scheme of fusion. So I had to set up these long pulse beams and we had these timing slides, which is where the beam comes in and bounces off one mirror, across to another mirror and then off. And then you can slide them backwards and forwards and you can delay the beams with respect to each other, right? Uh, so I had to set these up and so I put all the mirrors in that I thought were uh, the right mirrors. <laughs> Aha, we will come back to that. Uh, and then we proceeded with the experiment and I kept coming into the area and smelling something quite weird. I was like, it smells slightly like electrical burning but it's not electrical burning and I'm not sure what it is. Uh, and my supervisor at the time was like, ah, it's fine, this'll be fine. And then we did a, a proton radiograph, which is to take a picture of the one of the, we were basically compressing a sphere uh, with these beams, uh, and then you would take a picture of it using protons, uh, recorded on something called radiochromic film, which is, um, it basically recauses um, the dose of protons that's it, uh, that, it, that it hits uh, and you can you can basically t uh, it, it kind of images the field so basically you can see a little a little uh, uh, picture of the implosion at a particular time because you can delay the proton beam with respect to the interaction and we start we saw this implosion and it was a heart shape and we were like mm, this is meant to be symmetrical <laughs> why is this and so we were sort of searching around for, for a solution to, to why this was the case. So it must be something to do with the long pulse beam, so it must be driving it unevenly. So we started looking uh, for reasons why this could be the case. And then one of the guys who was working in the target area went around the back and went, I think I found your problem. <laughs> Uh, and basically one of what I thought was the high reflective mirrors that I put in the timing slides was in fact beam splitter and so half the energy was coming out the back uh, going into a, a metal leg and kind of grinding into the metal leg and flecking all the paint off so that was the source of the smell that we were smelling uh, and also the source of the asymmetry but but happily it produced such a beautiful heart-shaped image that everyone was really happy anyway so there you go live and learn <laughs>